Hello. Um, welcome to the final module of the genomics and genomics in clinical medicine online course. Today, I am uh, I am going to talk about emerging therapeutics for genetic diseases. My name is Dr. Shiva Prakash Ramalingam. So the agenda for my talk is uh, I will just uh, give a brief introduction about gene therapy uh, and the limitations in the treatment of uh, genetic diseases. And then I will discuss about uh, the basics of genome editing and their clinical application, biomedical applications. Finally, I will touch upon genome editing to cure the beta hemoglobin disorders. So that we are working in our lab for last couple of years. So uh, these are the genetic or hereditary disorders. As you know, this is all the most prevalent genetic, genetic disorders. Uh, the sickle cell uh, thalass sickle cell anemia and th beta thalassemia which affects the um, uh, blood so both the diseases both the, the diseases are caused by mutation in the same gene which is hemoglobin gene in the case of sickle cell anemia there is a single point mutation uh, which causes the amino acid change from glutamic acid to valine but in the case of beta thalassemia, there are array of mutations. There are more than 200 different mutations present across the gene, which is which causes the chain imbalance. Because of the mutation, there is a less production of uh, beta globin, excess production of alpha globin. So that causes the, the chain imbalance, which, which leads to the reduced erythropoiesis. So that's why the patients have to go for regular blood transfusion. Okay. So the other disease is the cystic fibrosis, okay? So which affects the lung, which is also a, a monogenic disorder, which is, there is a mutation in the CFTR gene, which causes the cystic fibrosis. And there is the, another most common muscle disorder, which is the muscular dystrophy. This is the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, uh, the, which causes the muscle weakness, uh, because of the mutation in the DMD gene, which causes the uh, muscular dystrophy. And then most common ophthalmological disease is the retinous pigmentosa, which affects the eye. And then uh, the, uh, the disease called spinal cerebral cerebral ataxia, which, which is the neurological disorder. So these are the common genetic or hereditary disorders, which affects the um, uh, which affects the human population across the world. So I will start with what is gene therapy. So which is uh, been which is known for several years. We we been there for last three decades. So the gene therapy with the simple definition is introduction of a therapeutic or healthy gene into the patient cells using a viral vector to treat genetic disorder. Okay. So you take a therapeutic gene, which is the wild type gene with appropriate uh, signaling molecules, package it into the viral vector and either it can be an adeno associated viral vector or lenti viral vector or retroviral vector, which can be infused into uh, the patient. Okay, so this is the simple definition. And there are, what are the different strategies are there for um, gene therapy? Okay, there are two different strategies. One is the uh, in vivo gene therapy and the other one is the ex vivo gene therapy okay so in vivo means direct delivery of the um, the lenti the direct delivery of the viral particles into the patient's organ okay so here the therapeutic gene can be packaged into a adeno associated viral vector and that can be directly delivered into the patient by uh, a yeah, injection okay so this the adenovirus the advantage of the adenovirus is adenovirus has se several serotypes so each serotype has a uh, specific uh, infectivity okay so this example iaav6 which can uh, deliver your therapeutic gene mainly into hematopoietic stem cells so that is the major advantage of the adeno associated viral vectors so the other approach is the cell based delivery of therapeutic gene so it's a x y o approach you take out the patient cells say example in the case of sickle cell or beta thalassemia you take out the patients cd34 hematopoietic stem progenitor cells and then take hbb that is the therapeutic gene the wild type gene which doesn't have any mutation package them into a lentiviral vector with appropriate signal molecules, promoters, terminators, and the other sequences. 
and then transduce these the cd34 hematopoietic stem progenitor cells which we have harvested from the patients using the lentiviral particles and then the transfuse them back into the uh, patients this genetically engineered cells can be transfused back into the patient so this has to be the uh, done at the the gmp uh, facility good manufacturing uh, facility okay so uh, i have given you a definition what is gene therapy and there are two different strategies one is in vivo and the other one is ex vivo approach okay so what are the limitations of the current gene therapy well, there are several clinical trials are already going on uh, with the, uh, these gene therapy approaches but there are some limitations uh, 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 potential limitations using these uh, gene therapy approaches especially the um uh, the viral vectors okay so that there are two main uh, uh, major uh, limitations one is very these vectors have uh, very low rate of homologous recombination okay so what happens is the homologous recombination efficiency in human cells is 1 in 10 to the power 6 cells okay so it is like 1 in 1 million cells okay so it is not a targeted integration it's may randomly integrate into the human genome okay uh, but on the other side the non homologous enjoining happens in a little higher side okay 1 in 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 7 uh, treated cells and the second major limitation is high rate of random non targeted integration elsewhere in the genome say example in sickle cell or thalassemia you want to integrate your hbb gene in the chromosome 11 at the beta globin cluster okay but these lentiviral particles or retroviral particles may randomly integrate your therapeutic gene in the human genome so um, so it may get randomly integrated in the onco gene site so the onco gene may get activated so that eventually the patient who has taken this lentiviral particles will end up with leukemia so the random integration of therapeutic genes into the genome can be unpredictable effects on gene expression and unintended effects on neighboring genes which is the best example is the severe combined immunodeficiency uh, gene therapy this was way back in 2000 uh, 20 years back Uh, the retroviral based uh, uh, gene therapy was tried tried for the skid patients but unfortunately the transgene got integrated randomly into the onco gene site and then the onco gene got activated and then the patient got develop uh, developed a leukemia uh, uh, and then he died so uh, these are all the limitations okay so this is what i was telling you Uh, the skid is the bubble syndrome which is caused by il2 receptor subunit the il2 or gamma gene so one of the 11 patients who got this skid retroviral mediated gene delivery had developed leukemia about 3 years after receiving this gene therapy uh, so but because of the random integration he developed a leukemia so that is where the miracle gene therapy trial halted so given these limitations there are recent uh, there are uh, several adva- uh, lim- there are several advances has happened in the uh, g- uh, uh, gene and cell therapy field one of the ad- uh, advances advancement is the targeted genome editing using gene editing nucleases which has revolutionized the field of gene therapy okay so the question is can we precisely edit to the Uh, genetic uh, uh, errors or the mutations okay so here i have given uh, sickle cell mutation which is the uh, um, uh, the valine because the gag is converted into valine which is the mutation okay can we reverse this back by specifically precisely correct the particular mutation instead of gtg in the patients can we revert back into gag okay so uh, another case is the beta thalassemia can be correct the beta thalassemia mutation or there are some lysosomal disorders like gaucher's disease or any, anything so that is what the question so is there a technique currently available to cure uh, to correct the particular mutations yes the, that is the technique is called as the genome editing okay what is genome editing genome editing is the process of introducing specific modification in the endogenous genomic dna including deletions point mutations inversions or translocations by making targeted double stranded break as i told earlier the uh, the homologous recombination 
uh, in mammalian cells happens one in one million cells one in 10 to the power six cells okay so that is very very low okay but if you make a targeted double stranded break the homologous recombination efficiency goes up several uh, hundred folds okay so that is where the genome editing makes a lot of difference in terms of genetic correction okay why genome editing so one advantage is you can correct the disease mutation that is the therapeutic uh, uh, um, perspective. The second one, therapeutic application. Uh, the second is um, we can able to understand the genetic, the, understand the function of uh, gene or a protein or long non-coding RNA, miRNA. Okay, so in human genome we have we know that there are twenty thousand protein coding genes, but still we don't know uh, the function of many genes. Okay, so still we don't know function of many genes. Okay, so if you want to study the function of each and every gene so you can go and make a knockout uh, um, make a double standard break and make a knockout uh, targeted knockout and then study the function of the gene in a given cell type so to know that whether the, the gene or uh, protein or lnc rna mi rna which is essential for uh, the uh, cell growth and development okay so there are three uh, gene editing nucleases which is currently used for genome editing the first one is zinc finger nucleases. Zinc finger is a DNA binding protein. It is a very well-known DNA binding protein, which is most abundant DNA binding protein in the eukaryotic system. Okay. So the zinc finger, each zinc finger module specifically uh, binds to three bases. Okay. It's each specifically binds to uh, three bases, uh, targets the three bases in the genome. Okay. So the zinc finger, um, uh, what is the advantage of the zinc finger is we can able to uh, module, we can be able to create uh, a zinc finger which can target your specific gene of interest. Okay, that is the major advantage. We can design a zinc finger DNA binding protein to target a specific gene. Okay, so this is uh, zinc finger, but zinc finger... Um, is a DNA binding protein, but we need a nuclease component. Okay, so that's where uh, Professor Srinivasan Chandrasekharan from Johns Hopkins University, he has taken the zinc finger DNA binding protein and fused it with the FOC1 uh, nuclease enzyme, which is a, uh, a DNA, uh, which is the restriction enzyme, type 2 restriction enzyme. Okay, so um, so initially we he has shown that the, the, he has separated the DNA binding protein and the nuclease uh, nuclease part in the FOC1 domain, and then he has shown uh, even after separation the nuclease domain is still active, and then he has taken the FOC1 nuclease domain, fused it with the zinc finger DNA binding protein, and then he has created a zinc finger nucleases. Okay. So, um, so zinc finger nuclease is nothing but zinc finger DNA binding protein fused with the FOC1 restriction enzyme. Okay, so zinc finger nucleases, as I said, can be engineered to target virtually any DNA sequence in any cell. Okay, so um, so you need to have a two zinc finger uh, nucleases. Okay, the FOC1 has to dimerize to make the double stranded break. Okay, so in order to achieve the uh, um, a double standard break, you need to have the uh, uh, two zinc fingers, zinc finger left and zinc finger right. Say example, if you want to target a HBB gene, you can take five zinc finger left module, five zinc finger right module. So each module will target 15 base pair in the right, 15 base pair in the left. Okay, so that 30 base pair in at a stretch in the gene uh, uh, sequence will not be present anywhere else in the genome. So that is where the specificity goes up. Okay, once you deliver the left and zinc, right and zinc finger nucleus into the cell, so the zinc finger, uh, the module will bind at the target locus and then the FOC1 nuclease will dimerize and it will make a targeted double standard break. Okay. The second uh, zinc, uh, the uh, nuclease which is currently used for gene and cell therapy is the tail nuclease, which is the transcription activator like effector nucleases. Okay, so which is uh, um, very similar to uh, zinc finger nuclease, but the only difference here is zinc finger uh, recognizes three uh, uh, nucleotides, but here each tail module recognizes only one base pair. 
Okay, that is the only difference. Talons are similar to zinc finger nuclease. As I told, tails can be fused to, to FOC1, same FOC1 restriction enzyme, type 2 restriction enzyme, that is the nuclease part, to bind the specific sequence and of DNA and then cut at, uh, at a defined site. So talon can, talons bind and cleave as a dimer on a, a target site. So the cleavage of the FOC1 nuclease will... Uh, domains occurs in the spacer sequence that lies between the two regions, okay, between your tail left and tail right, which makes the, the FOC1 makes the double standard break, okay. So, once it makes the double standard break, um, there are different mechanisms will happen. I will come uh, in my subsequent slides, I will talk about how these, the, the, the double standard break repair is happening, okay. The third uh, one is, which is the, the recent one, which is the crispr cas approach, which is naturally occurring uh, uh, system, uh, the bacterial immune system, but the scientists have uh, re-engineered for the mammalian genome editing, okay. So, um, so as we all know that uh, um, the, vi uh, the virus infects the bacteria, so once the virus infects the bacteria, the bacteria has a yeah, memory, okay? So it can able to adopt the machinery which can select the foreign DNA which is specific to the invader sequence from the viral particle. So it takes a small portion of the invader sequence and it incorporates into the CRISPR system, CRISPR array system in the bacteria. Okay, so when, so this CRISPR system gets transcribed, which 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 is getting transcribed and produces the pre-CRISPR RNA and the CRISPR RNA, uh, and then it binds to the um, invader sequence. Okay, so this has a memory. Okay, so when the next time when the same virus infects the bacteria, so it uses the CRISPR array system and then it produces the crRNA. And then the crRNA binds to the viral particle, which since it has the homology, and then the Cas9 will get the, the CRISPR RNA complex with the Cas9 enzyme, and then it binds to the viral DNA, and the Cas9 makes the double standard break, which basically makes targeted double standard break, which chops and then degrades the viral DNA. So that's how this naturally this CRISPR Cas9 system works in the bacterial system. Okay, but it was re-engineered uh, for the mammalian system. So what the scientists have done is they are two different mod modules. One is the tracer RNA and the uh, CR RNA. So they have fused these two things uh, and then created yeah, the simple one guide RNA. So you have instead of in nature, there are three components, tracer RNA, CRISPR RNA and Cas9. But in the case of the genome editing, which is the uh, the re-engineered part is containing only two parts. One is the guide RNA, which is the synthetic guide RNA and the Cas molecule. Okay. Okay. How it can be used for uh, gen genome, uh, how it can be used for genetic correction purpose or if you want to create a, um, uh, a mutation. Okay. How it can be used for therapeutics. Okay. So if you are working with a genetic disorder, say example, sickle cell anemia or thalassemia or cystic fibrosis or any genetic disorder. So you design any uh, uh, one of the gen gene editing uh, tool, okay, either it can be zinc finger talons or CRISPR. So to target the HBB gene in the case of sickle cell or thalassemia. So if this, if you deliver this gene editing tool, it goes into binds at the target locus. Simply it makes the targeted double standard break, okay. Okay, so, um, so that targeted double standard break can be uh, can be uh, can go into two different pathways. One is non-homologous enjoining. So if you don't provide any donor DNA, it can go into non-homologous enjoining. So during this non-homologous enjoining, there may be a small insertion, deletion, or base pair substitutions may happen. That is called as indels. Okay. So if you want to make a knockout of any specific gene. You want to study the pro the basic function of the gene. You can simply create a yeah, knockout using this non-homologous enjoining mediated gene disruption. Okay, so the second approach is if you want to correct a particular mutation along with this gene editing nucleases, you also deliver a donor DNA which has the appropriate homology arms, left homology arm and right homology arm, and this is the portion which you want to correct the mutations from GAG, GTG to GAG in the case of sickle cell anemia, okay? 
So what happens is once it makes the target a double standard break, the cells will undergo a repair mechanism. Okay. So if you provide a donor DNA, since it has the homology homology arms, so it takes up these the donor DNA and it uses the homologous re recombination approach and then it gets inserted at the target locus by homology directed repair. Okay. So that's where we can use this genome. Uh, so uh, gene editing nuclease which can make the target a double standard break by using homolo homology directed repair, we can correct the particular mutation. But the shared approach is if you want to overexpress a particular protein, say example, if you want to insert a gene into a safe harbor locus in the human genome, there are a couple of safe harbor locus, which is uh, say example, CCR5 or AAVS1. So these are the safe harbor locus uh, um, in the human genome. So even if we insert something foreign gene into these locus, it will not affect the cell growth and development. Okay. So the advantage of the targeted double standard break is it enhances the homologous recombination into several thousand fold. Okay. So the HDR efficiency goes up. So that's where the gene editing nucleases plays a major role in uh, genetic correction uh, of genetic diseases. Okay, so uh, I will just, uh, uh, now I will focus mainly on can we cure the beta hemoglobin disorders using this gene editing approach. Okay, so uh, as I told sickle cell disease, which is the monogenic disease, which, which is caused by a single nucleotide change, which is the GAG, which get converted into GTG, which alters the glutamic acid into the valine. Because of this, um, a single nucleot single amino acid change, the shape of the blood cell get changed. So because the wild type will get uh, changed into the sickle cell shape. So this, uh, 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 because of the sickle shape, it can't able to pass through the blood vessels. So wild type cells will be round uh, shape, which can easily pass into the blood vessel. But in the case of sickle cell, uh, the shape um, uh, is changed. Uh, it can't able to pass through the blood vessel. So it can stick together and then it can't able to take carry the oxygen from one cell to, uh, from lungs to the other parts of the body. So because of the mutation, this can able to lead to vasoocclusive crisis, acute chest syndrome, hemolysis, anemia, and several other symptoms. In, but in the other side, the beta thalassemia, which is caused by several uh, mutations. There are 200 different mutations spread across the gene. Okay, so this causes, as I told earlier, the chain imbalance because of the chain imbalance, which leads to the anemia, which is the most prevalent genetic disorders in the world. What is the current treatment? For sickle cell diseases, there are some small molecules which is available currently, hydroxyurea, algolitamin, uh, these are the, or the GBT4404 voxelator, okay? So, or the patients have to go for regular blood transfusion. Currently, there is a only one cure which is available is the bone marrow transplantation. But there are several limitations which is, which are lack of donors and the GVHD, okay. So these are the major uh, uh, limitations of the sickle cell disease. In the case of beta thalassemia, uh, um, there is no drug currently available. Only drug, only uh, option for this is the treatment option is the blood transfusion. So they have, the patients have to go for regular blood transfusion. So that also has uh, complications like iron overload and organ damage. So for beta thalassemia patients also, they they have uh, they should have uh, they have the bone marrow transplantation, which is the curative option. But there are the same limitations, lack of donors, uh, which is allogenic and all these things. Okay, so just, there is still need for effective and definitive therapeutic strategy strategy for uh, both sickle cell and thalassemia. Okay, I'll just briefly touch upon the developmental pattern of the beta globin in gene uh, uh, globin gene in human life. So there are five genes which uh, which is present in the beta globin cluster. Uh, that is the embryonic hemoglobin, uh, fetal hemoglobin, and the adult hemoglobin HBD and HBB. Okay. So how it is being regulated uh, in each uh, developmental stage is during embryonic hemoglobin. So what is uh, there are some locus control regions, okay, which is present upstream of these hemo, uh, hemoglobin genes. Okay, this is the master regulator of the hemoglobin genes. During embryonic stage, the locus control region forms a loop at the promoter region of the embryonic hemoglobin and it activates the embryonic hemoglobin. Okay, 
so after uh, the first uh, six to eight weeks during the gestation the first switch happens okay the embryonic hemoglobin gets silenced and then the locus controlled region forms loop with the promoter region of either hpg2 or hbg1 and then those either one of the gene will get activated so that uh, takes care about the uh, oxygen transport at the fetal stage okay so the second switch happens uh, after your birth maybe within 6 months this embryo uh, the adult the sorry the fetal hemoglobin also gets silenced and the uh, the locus control region forms a loop with the adult hemoglobin okay so that's where the adult stage um, almost like 99.9% .9 of the individuals express the adult hemoglobin okay but there are some individuals due even at the adult stage they still expresses the um, uh, fetal hemoglobin okay that is because of there are some small point mutations or long deletions in the uh, hemoglobin uh, cluster at chromosome 11 which leads to the high fetal hemoglobin okay so that is called as hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin okay so the, there is impaired hemoglobin switching that is leads to the hpfh like a condition so hereditary persistence of fetal hemoglobin which is the natural way to enhance the fetal hemoglobin expression okay the clinical symptoms of sickle cell or the beta thalassemia or can are alleviated in patients who inherited the hpfh genotype okay so around 20 percent of the fetal hemoglobin is sufficient to prevent the clinical crisis you know we don't need to reactivate 100 percent so hence reactivation of fetal hemoglobin um, has a potential definitive solution for hemoglobinopathies and treatment free survival okay so as i told there are some non-deletional and deletional forms of the hpfhs is natural these are all the natural uh, hpfh mutations okay so these non-deletional mutations which are all present in the promoter region of the either hbg1 or in the hbg2 uh, region okay so these are all the base pair substitutions okay May either space pair substitutions or there is a single base pair addition in this region okay so there are different ethnic groups have different mutations okay so uh, the other side you have a deletional uh, mutation deletional hpfh there is a long deletion uh, it starts from uh, 13 kb 12.9 kb to almost like 106 kb downstream of the hbg1 which is still up to the uh, uh, the three prime hypersensitive region okay so both leads to high level of fetal hemoglobin so the as i told earlier the patients who have who, who who inherit this uh, sickle cell mutation along with the fetal uh, the hereditary persistent fetal hemoglobin mutation will live very normal life without having any clinical abnormalities okay so as i told earlier uh, for beta hemoglobinopathies there are two different uh, uh, curative ap approaches are available one is the lentiviral mediated gene therapy the other one is the genome editing approach both the cases you take patients cd34 hematopoietic stem cells in the case of genome editing you can um, 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 you can create a beneficial hpfh like mutation using genome editing approach to reactivate the fetal hemoglobin uh, and then put it back into the patient reinfuse them into the patients or in the other side you can take uh, the patient cd34 hematopoietic stem cells and then use the wild type hbb gene um, and then package them into lentiviral particle and then transduce them into CD34 hematopoietic stem progenitor cells so that this will get integrated into the uh, human genome uh, and then it will start expressing the hemoglobin gene will get expressing will get express expressing so then it can be reinfused back into the patient so this will lead to both genome editing as well as the lentiviral approach both will lead to the um, cure for these patients so the genome editing will reactivate the fetal hemoglobin in the lentiviral approach you can uh, put the wild type or the therapeutic gene into the human genome uh, integrate the therapeutic gene into the human genome okay so in genome editing um, um, there are three different approaches can be uh, um, can be uh, used 
one is you can use the homology directed repair so so uh, as i told earlier so you can uh, you create a zinc finger nuclease talons or the crispr um, uh, nuclear crispr approach crispr uh, sgrna uh, crispr approach make a double stranded break target a double stranded break and then provide a donor dna and then correct the particular mutation okay the or the second approach is there are some negative regulators which uh, binds at the promoter region of the fetal hemoglobin and it suppresses the fetal hemoglobin expression so if we can able to mutate the negative regulators using simple uh, uh, nhej approach which also leads to the uh, enhanced fetal hemoglobin approach uh, enhanced fetal hemoglobin okay the third approach is you can create there are some as i told earlier in my slide uh, there are natural mutations either point mutations or there is a deletions okay non deletional hpfh or deletional hpfh which can be created using a yeah, gene editing tool uh, and then uh, which will reactivate the fetal hemoglobin so these two approaches either uh, if you knock out the negative regulator or if you create the beneficial hpfh mutation which is a one stop solution for both sickle cell and thalassemia okay so the limitation of the homology directed repair is the um, ho uh, it's a two step process okay so you need to, as i told you need to make a target a double stranded break and then by homology directed homologous uh, uh, by homology directed repair the donor dna gets inserted okay so the uh, non homologous enjoining the double stranded break happens throughout the cell cycle but the homology directed repair happens only in the late s yes, and g2 phase okay so that's where the efficiency is somewhat less in homology directed repair there um, repair the gene correction efficiency is will be less compared to the non homologous enjoining okay so this is the overall xyo genome editing approach you take the patients uh, uh, mobilize the patient with um, gcsf or plerexi4 uh, for either sickle cell or thalassemia patient by epheresis you take out the cd34 hematopoietic stem progenitor cells and uh, take out the blood the peripheral blood mononuclear cells separate them using cd uh, clonimax uh, prodigy system using the cd34 uh, magnetic beads uh, and then use the electroporation system uh, non which is the non viral approach and then create a beneficial hpfh mutation or delete the negative regulators in the cd34 cells and then uh, transfuse them into the patients so this will be a uh, this will be a one time um a solution uh, one one stop solution for both sickle cell as well as thalassemia so this will completely cure the patient so these two things this uh, the epheresis uh, at happens at the hospital and then manufacturing of the uh, genome editing product happens at the gmp product and then again the the cells will uh, take it into the hospital um, and then it will be transfused back into the uh, patient's bone marrow then after it will get the patient will get completely cured okay thank you with this i will stop here thank you